Hello, everyone. It looks like we're live. I hope. I'll wait to get going until I make sure that we've got audio correctly. I'm already hitting the wrong buttons, so I'm a pro. I totally don't know what I'm doing with all of these buttons. Oh, good. Nick already says audio check, videos check. Wow, that was fast. I must, must not have as much of a delay as I've usually had lately, so yay. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Tonight, we are going to be working in pen pastels and colored pencil. I've drawn this on the smooth side of my Cans and Me Tens, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, yes, we've got the, the hound cam. The boys are over here watching. Wade's already passed out. Gibson's hoping for treats. I didn't say the word. You you don't, he does know that word. Treats was always the word we used to so like the secret word because the dogs didn't know that because they go with C-O-O k-i-e-s why can't it see there's an extra c i can't spell without writing it down anyway um yeah gibson learned our other word but they are here over there watching we are going to after this we'll be cover or once we get the the project finished i'll be going over your questions so if you have any questions leave them now as we're going um hopefully something like good that we can really talk about that i can edit and upload into a separate video. So I really, really appreciate your questions that are like, make me think and give, give us a lot of, a lot of content to edit into other videos for later. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, leave your questions now. I won't be answering them until the very end. Cause we're just going to focus on the artwork. Once we get started here, we're also going to be talking about, um, ideas that will help you coming up with ideas or not ideas coming up with ideas. Hi, grammar grammar's not here today. Um, but we'll be talking about ways that you can constantly have this idea going in your head for your next piece. So if you're somebody who is always kind of sitting around going, I don't know what to paint or draw. I don't have any ideas. I've got, got another idea that might help you with that. We're also going to talk about one of the biggest destroyers of your creativity. Like this thing will just trample over any creativity you have. So we'll be talking about that later. And are we ready? Okay, that was right. Thank you, Starving Artist Collective. Was that, wait, did I spell that right? I feel like there's an extra, I have to write it down. I just don't know how to spell by wording things out. See, I would never be good at spelling bees. I, I can wreck it, like I can write it. I can't just say it out loud. Anyway, um, that is pathetic and I shouldn't tell people I can't just say the, spell the such a simple word. Anyway. Moving on. So for tonight, I am working on Cansony Tens. This is the black, and I chose the smooth side of this one because I'm going to be using colored pencil. Now, normally if I use pan pastels, I prefer the slightly more rough side of the paper, but or not pan pastels, charcoals, which is very similar in texture. I like that grippiness of the paper. But in this case, because I'm going on top with colored pencils, I really want a smoother finish for the pencils. I know you may be thinking, but you do this in pan and sanded paper and that's rough, but sanded paper is its own, a whole other beast. So here, smooth side is what I've chosen. Honestly, you could do it on either side, but so that the butterfly comes out a little bit more smooth. That's why I went with smooth paper. I've got it taped along the edges. This is with a pH neutral tape. I should have the link in the video description. If I don't, I'll put it in the video once I edit this down. But this is a pH neutral masking tape. Now, you may think, I'm not leaving the tape there. Why can't I just use regular masking tape? I used to do that for years. The problem is that the regular masking tape, even this tape, it's going to leave some residue on the artwork itself. So unless you're chopping that off, if you're cutting it, I don't really worry about it. because And you can just trim that off and not worry so much. But if you're not, like in this case, I don't want to trim the paper down. So I want to make sure that all the products I'm using with this are pH neutral. They're acid free. It's not going to leave a acidic residue that will start to eat away at the paper over time. Or it really, it's not that it eats away at it, it starts to yellow it. So I actually don't know how much of an issue that would cause on black paper, but just in case, why not just use the stuff that we know is safe? And I just get it on Amazon. It's not terribly expensive. I don't remember what I paid for this one, but it lasts a decent amount of time because the only thing I use this for is I actually have a thinner one when I mat my work and then I use it for taping work down, but I don't use it on like other household projects. So it really, even if it is, and it is a bit more expensive, obviously, than your normal masking tape, it's worth it and it's gonna last you a long time. I'm going to need, I don't have glassine out. One second, I need to grab some glassine. Entertain them, boys. No, 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 lay down, I didn't call you. Lay down, go for it. Oh, 
Okay, so this is my glass seam. It comes in a roll. This is another thing. The link should be in the video description, and it will last you a long time as well. What? <coughs> sorry, my coffee has been horrible lately. But what we're going to do is tape this to the artwork as I'm working on the butterfly. So one, I won't end up smudging my pastels that way. And two, I keep my people juices off the artwork. People juices, any grease, any oils on your hands, not archival. And I don't care how well you've washed your hands, that starts to get on there. So it's better as much as possible. We want to keep our people juices to ourselves and not on the work. And that's what the glassine is for. The glassine is pH neutral and it, nothing sticks to it. That's the bigger thing. So you could use another piece of paper that's better than nothing. I used to use a piece of tracing paper. Better than nothing. But the problem is with tracing paper, with another sort of paper, a lot of times it will, like a little nugget of that will get under the paper you're working on. And when you slide the paper over, it kind of sticks and leaves a mark. That really sucks if you've got a background like this that you're not trying to fill with color. This, nothing's sticking to it. So the chances of that happening are much less likely. Also, I use this to wrap my artwork in, paintings and drawings, when I ship them. So I don't want cardboard, cardboard, not acid free. I don't want that up against the painting itself or up against the paper. So I wrap it in glassine first and then I box it. Those of you who got your painting, they should be arriving today or tomorrow. I think everything was sent priority. Those of you who ordered paintings, during the big sale last week. Those are on the way, except for the Raven because I had to varnish it. The Raven's still sitting here. My plan is to send that either tomorrow. Tomorrow's got really bad weather, so it might be Friday. But I wanted to make sure it dried all the way because that guy didn't need to be varnished. Anyway, moving on. The point is this stuff is like multi-purpose. I use it on artwork if I've got like a bunch of paintings or drawings stacked up, I can put this in between each painting or drawing so that it protects it from any scuffing, scraping, anything like that. So this stuff is super help, help um, handy. Oh, yay, Nick got his today. So, okay. Oh, hi, Dirks. Dirks, Dirks, I don't know, Fish Hotel. So Fish Hotel, any of you guys have reef tanks? That's where I get my fish from. Like all of them. He's like my only person I trust at this point. He quarantines them like he does all the stuff to make sure they're parasite free and don't make my other fish sick and they're awesome great person anyway that is where my fish all come from or lately they've been coming from um okay moving on let's see well this guy said she's loving the horse painting on uh, on patreon perfect timing oh nice yeah if you can see i don't know if you can see see the horse in the background there i'm almost done with him so this week's lesson is going to be a little bit late on for patreon oils you just have that dry time so everything takes a little longer it, funny thing is it won't even be that long of a lesson because it, it's the the waiting for it to dry before i can go on to the next layer anyway i'll have that and probably a charcoal piece for you this week like coming up next week, probably about the same time. So you'll still get the same amount per month, but one of them's a little light. Moving on, Rob, thank you so much for the super chat. He said, I can't stay long tonight, but Wade is looking too thin. So this is for my favorite bad cow in Gibson. Boys, you get a treat. Do you guys want a cookie? And here they come. We got a super chat for you. Say thank you to Rob. You want to get two? Gibson swall. I don't know if you can see, he keeps moving his head. He's swallowing really hard right now because his mouth is salivating so much. Kind of gross TMI, but he's super excited is the point of that story. Yeah, you know what's coming, huh? Oh, whoops, dropped one. Did you notice when I dropped one, they didn't die for it? Well-trained boys. So we have to wait till mom hands it to us. Okay, one more. You get two for that one. See, you're drooling all over the floor. This is why I have tile floors. They make a mess. Good boys. Okay, go lay, you're still drooling. Go lay down, lay down, lay down. They thank you, Rob. All the way, Gibson, lay down. Gibson. They, now they've got to figure out who goes into what bed. There we go, good boys. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and get into the artwork. So I'm going to be doing this first with the pan pastels. Pan pastels and colored pencil, great mixed medium to work with together. Like pan pastels just work great with so many things. So I'm going to be putting it on so many papers. I'm going to do the background. If you've got the reference photo, it's over at my, or if you need it, it's over at my website, lawcree.com. The, the direct link to this project is linked in the video description. So you can download the reference photo. I believe I got this one from Unsplash. So royalty free. If you draw this with me or you draw this after you have full rights, because we're both using photos that are royalty free to sell it, make prints, whatever you want. Oh, last thing, this is available for auction right now. If you head over to my website, lawcree.com, link is in the description, you can bid on this one. Just be warned when you're bidding, you don't know what it's gonna come out like, so it'll be good. 
I, I promise it'll be good. So let's go ahead and get started with the pan pastels. I don't need my glassine just yet because I won't need to rest my hand on the artwork. So let's get all of these set up. I'm gonna be using soft tools to apply and blend this. I've gotta take the covers off of this because it's super dirty. Grab a new one. So when you get, I keep a little container like this to with all of my soft tools, so are the covers. So when they get burnt out, you can replace those easily. And let's go. And they just slide right over. And you try to do that slowly because they rip really easily. Okay, and when what I do when I'm choosing my color, so with this one, it's just grays and blacks, really, or gray, yeah, white and black I'll be using. So what I do is just take whatever color I want I'm just gonna rub that on there. And you can see mine are messy. You can see where other colors have been smudged. Honestly, it does not make that big of a deal. I know people get really like neurotic about keeping all of that clean. I just don't find it matters that much. So I don't worry about it. If you have to wipe it off, use a paper towel, but not a big deal. And I'm gonna now come through and start building up my bouquet look. And I can go right over the butterfly. Don't even worry about getting any on him. It's not gonna hurt anything. Because you can see, I can still see the little antenna sticking through there. I'd rather not get it all over the flower, though, so we'll go around that. And I'm just working this in circles. Still in the center, though, so I've got little holes in the center there. Now, I've tried using Pam Pastels with brushes, like paint brushes. I don't like the results I get. Or like mop brushes that I would use for blending with acrylics or powder brushes, that sort of thing. You end up just knocking too much product off the paper. A lot of it doesn't stick very well. So I'm starting with the gray. I'm going to come through with some black and some white to build up contrast in a bit here. See how this, this is just like the easiest. That bouquet look is so easy to get. And I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm going to do like what the reference photo has where it's just kind of a row moving through. And you want to make sure when you do that bouquet look, you want variation in the circles. You want variation in the size. You want variation in like the value. Some of them should be brighter. Some should be darker. Do not make them all the same. And you also want them to overlap. If you don't overlap these, it just looks like polka dots. We don't want polka dots. Unless you're going for an actual polka dot look, but that's not what we're doing here. And see how I don't have to keep reloading the brush. I can use the same what's there and it gives me that nice variation as it starts to fade out. So I always thought these were moths. I used to catch these when I was a kid. They were always around my grandmother had, I forget what kind of flowers they were, but they were always everywhere. I used to catch them and then set them free. I thought they were moths. They're not. They're actually, they're Essex butterflies. Kind of messed up my brain because I was certain they were moths when I was kids. a kid. When I was kids, I was plural kids. Fancy like that. And I'm gonna leave what's there. I want just this soft, soft look fading out. So I thought I'd have to mix black in to get that softer faded look. And it looks like I won't need to. Just what little is left on that brush is giving me that beautiful soft look. Same thing, we're gonna get a really soft fade out here. Make sure those edges are soft. Now I'm also going to be using the pan pastels to fill in the butterfly and the flower. So I've got a nice base layer. It'll make the, the colored pencil portion go really quickly. Okay, and then anywhere where I want it to be a little bit brighter, I can go back over it. I'm just on a few of them. I don't want everything super bright. with a little bit of white. I want to be careful because this can get really bright really quick. Um, hold on one second. 
Nick just asked if the auction site was working. Let me reread what he wrote. I may have to check something really quick. Okay, hold on. Let me see what's going on with auction. What's it doing for you guys? Um, hmm. Oh, it says auction failed. What the heck? Why would that? I may have to make a new listing for that. Why would auction fail? I've never seen that before. Oh, was it be, wait, no? Yeah, because there was a buy it now on it. Was that what happened? Hold on, let me double check. Of course, it would probably, if I got any notifications, it would go to spam because that's how things go. No? Okay, this will take me just a second. Oh, it doesn't even let me edit it. Okay, I'm going to have to make a new one really quick. I don't know why it's showing. No bids, top bidder, bid count, view bid log. There's no bid. Why is it? I've never seen that before, so I don't know why. It's easy enough. Give me one second. Luckily, this is a fairly pr fast project, so it's not going to take long to get through. So I can just make a new one really quick. What a weird auction failed though. I hope it doesn't do that again. One second. Kind of cool thing. You can see how fast it is to do all of this stuff through um, WooCommerce and WordPress. Although, who knows? Oh, it's not a great impression, I guess, that that gives off given that it didn't work right, but okay. Um, let's see. Variable auction. Auction. Starting bid. 55. Buy it now. I don't know if that was the problem, the buy it now. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, duration. That is today, March 1st. And also March 1st. Isn't this fun watching me? Oops, that's the wrong button. Um, 22, done. Decimal numbers. Maybe just in case, I'm going to take out the buy it now. Should I take out the buy it now? Probably. Let's just do that. Um, bid increment, normal. Okay. I think that's it. Let me publish that and then I'll get the link posted onto the, the thing. Hold on. So I'm going to move this link will be on my front page in just a moment here. And then I can't edit it out of the live stream portion. So it'll just be on the front, the info on the front page of my site. Live stream. Now we just have to cross our fingers. It doesn't do the same thing. I don't know why it did that. Okay, save. So there's the new link there. I'll post the link in the chat. There is the new link. Oh, um, I can't put the link in there, um, Nick, because it's on my phone. Did it do it again? Oh, no, that was Joseph's. I can't get it. The link is here and not, oh, they're two different devices and I'm not coordinated enough to make both of those things happen. Um, let's see if that then works. Let me know otherwise, I don't even know what to do if it keeps failing. I didn't this time do a buy it now. I don't know if that made any difference. 
because I know if somebody cancels, let's see. Okay, Nick got it. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. Nick and Joseph get stuck doing so much work for me. Okay, looks like it works. Okay, good. Thank you. Whew. Nothing like a last minute. It looks better already. I don't know why it did that. Okay, we're moving on. So let's get back to work. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit of white. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just taking my brush a little bit there. I'm kind of tapping some of that off on the paper, uh, paper towel. I guess I should bring the microphone with me. I'm tapping that off a little bit on the paper towel so that it's not too bright white. I want to get some variation in there. And I don't want to make all of them super bright. I really want that to fade. So some are brighter, some are darker. I'm going to make it more bright as we go through. Now, it looks like there's higher contrast on the video than what I'm seeing in purpose. Pur pur on purpose. My brain's not working tonight in person. So let me go ahead and move these guys. This is a bit softer. I may have to adjust the video or the camera now that we're getting some color on here. Well, not really color, but now that that's coming on there, it may need a bit of camera adjustment because I want it to look as accurate as possible for those of you who are going to bid. Okay. Ah, I love the background already. Okay, so that's all I'm doing on the background. Now, let me adjust because that is, eh, it's close. I think I can make it closer though. I may adjust the camera a couple times throughout the video because whenever I work when there's this dark of a background, that seems to always be a little bit of a challenge for the, the webcam. Let's darken that a bit. If I can find it. Contrast. There we go. ISO. Uh, that's probably a little closer, maybe. I also think it looks a little, whoa, too much. Too much. 51. There we go. That looks closer to me. Save and we are good. Okay. So now I'm going to do a base layer around the butterfly and on the flowers. And let's see, I'm going to switch my brush though. Not brush, my sponge. These are the soft pastel, the uh, SOFFT. And that one should be good for a little detail. It's pretty dirty from whatever I last used it on, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out. And this time I am not going for such a soft background, so I'm gonna use a triangle spongy guy. So this is gonna give me a little bit more control of the detail than the rounded one, whereas the rounded one gave me that nice soft look. Fix a few little things in there. Okay. So let's start with the butterfly. And he just looks like a, a yellow ochre for a lot of this. So I'm gonna load a little bit of that. And this doesn't have to be super clean or anything like that because the colored pencils are gonna correct a lot of this. We just wanna get a base layer. And you don't have to use the pan pastels for this. You could do it just with colored pencils, just that this is gonna give us a little bit of a softer look and it'll make the whole process a lot faster. And for the purpose of a live stream, that's pretty handy. Let's see, a little bit of fluff in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. So when I mix colors, all I do, I'm gonna take a little bit of my white. See, I'm super messy. This is gonna drive people crazy. A little bit of white, I'm gonna mix it right there. Give you a little bit more white in with that. That's it, that's how I mix my colors with Pan Pastels. They are very much like paint in that they're really easy to mix the colors that you want. Now what I'll do, once I get the Pan Pastel on there, I'm gonna put Spectrafix over this so it kind of seals this down before I go start going over it with colored pencil. And 
lighten that up a bit. And Spectrafix works fine as a spray for both. So that's why I go with that. Some sprays, some fixatives don't play nice with one or the other. The Spectrafix works great with both, or with both mediums, I mean. bit of that other wing showing down here. Okay, and it looks like most of the rest of this is going to be a dark brown. Now I'm working with the light color already, so what I want to do is just wipe this on my paper towel. I don't even have to reload or change the sponge. I can reuse it. I'm just going to wipe some of that off. I don't want to go too crazy because these do break down or start to rip really quickly, so I'm not going to like go crazy scrubbing it off, but getting some. Now I'm going to mix my, it looks like red oxide or burnt sienna. Let's see what they call it. Uh, they call this burnt sienna. I'm going to mix that with a bit of my black because black and burnt sienna give you a really nice brown tone. Mix a little of the red oxide in with that too. There we go. And I'll correct the shading in between that. I want to let some of the black paper show through. I don't need to cover all of it. Fill that in. Oh, he's already really cute. Okay, now I'm going to start on the, the flowers. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, let's start with the purple. So I've got purple dioxazine. I'm going to need to add some white to that. That is not showing up well. There we go, problem solved. Just a little bit of white in there. And so I'm doing the same thing. I'm mixing a little bit of white. Got the purple together. Just like before, I can leave some of that black showing through. Now, if it seems a bit dull right now, don't worry. We can fix all of that with colored pencils when we go over this. I hear Greyhound sign behind me. They must be bored. We've got green on a lot of this too. So let's put a little bit more with the white. And then we'll do some green. Don't overblend this. If I just keep reworking the same area again and again and again, I end up with one medium color. I don't want that. I want a combination of darks and lights. Big deal with your art. Okay, and then the green, just dab some of that purple off the brush. I think this is chromium oxide, oxide chromium. I don't know what order that goes in. You'd think I'd know. I can't see the name. I have to look on the back. So we're just going to make stuff up. Point is it's green. Add a little bit of white. Remember, if you add white, though, you make it more pastel. It's not as true of a color or rich. Okay, I think that's about all I need for the pan pastels. The rest will be colored pencils. So let me go ahead and put this stuff away. That gives us a nice base. This is a little bit more purple than what it looks like. Like the color is more saturated there. Okay, let me go put the pan pastels away.
So what I'm gonna do is lightly spray this with Spectrafix. So this is the Spectrafix, comes in a bottle like this. The problem is this bottle, when you spray it, it has these huge droplets come out and that will, you can, if it happens, you can blend over it. It's not the end of the world, but we can avoid most of that by putting this into a fine mist sprayer. This is wonderful. These are the same ones you see me use all the time for acrylic painting to get that fine mist to keep it wet while I blend. Also perfect for Spectrafix. I forget which one of you guys told me about that, but it is like life changer. So awesome. And I'm just going to lightly mist this. Don't go crazy. And I'm gonna let that dry. Now, I think I am going to take a hair dryer to it though to make it dry faster. So let me mute this. Sorry, I didn't have it on there when I sprayed, but it was basically just a super light mist and that's all I did for spraying it. But when you spray it, it will, so a couple of things, I don't know if you can see, there's some little dots in here where the Spectrafix did come out a little bit heavy. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my brush and just lightly smooth over that. So see, you, you lose it and the webcam may not pick that up because the webcam's not the most amazing with detail, but I, it's not like if it happens, it's that big of a deal, I'm just gonna blend. And there's not, I didn't reload this or add more pan pastels to make this happen. All I'm having to do is what, what little was on there and what's already on the paper, let that smudge so you get a softer look. The other thing is that when you add the Spectrafix, you just made the paper wet. When the paper is wet, it starts to warp. By using the hair dryer, that helped it to tighten up back into place so it's totally flat again. Now, I will show you this one, whoever buys this, and I'll show you, let me back this up a little bit. Um, actually, can I? Yeah, I need to back that up just a bit. So you have the option, whoever gets this, to have this come in a mat. You'll get a clean one. This one is kind of dirty. But you can see where it crops things off. So like down here, I don't need to go all the way to the bottom. You can see it kind of stopped here because I know the mat is going to, to cut that off. So that is what that will look like. Oops, that is not the right button. There we go. Okay. and colored pencil. So now we need to choose our, our colors. Whoops, almost messed up my easel there. I can put these away. So ideally when possible on something like this, I really like my polychromos when I've already got that base layer done because the polychromos are so good with your finer details. So that's my first choice. Next choice generally is going to be my Derwent light fast pencils. So part of it is going to be, depend on what color I need. We've got purples. We know I'm gonna want Derwent light fast because they have that brighter, richer color while still being light fast. So I'm gonna start with the browns and the yellow ochre. I'm gonna start with the butterfly tonight and I'm gonna grab my polychromos and see if we can get it opaque and bright enough. So I'm gonna go with ivory for my highlights. knock stuff down. Nothing in there. Or maybe the porn. Nope, nothing in that tray is helpful. And let's see, for yellows. I might use this cadmium yellow. It might be too bright. Definitely am going to be using the ye light yellow ochre. I want, this one looks good. We've got the, what is that? Terracotta, that looks like a good color. And now I need some browns. I think I'll probably put a bit of magenta in there too. So let's grab, that one should work. What is this one? Red violet. And 
And then for the browns, I'm gonna go with burnt umber. Yeah, the burnt umber should be fine. And then of course, black. Okay, and I now can use the glassine. And I'm just gonna tape this glassine to my drawing board. If I can find the edge of it with the tape, there we go. Now I will have to, hold on one second. There we go. I will end up needing to double check when I lift this, that this is all totally smooth. I have had areas with charcoal more where I could see, I don't know if I was just getting fall off from the additional charcoal as I worked fell on these and not those. I don't know, but I could see a line on that. So I will double check that when I'm done that everything is still even all the way across. Okay. So let me zoom in my reference photo. I'm gonna start with his eye. It's a big eye. He looks like a cartoon. It is adorable. And I don't know if these are gonna all work out for the colors. We'll find out. that actually works fine. So we've got the highlight I did with the yellow ochre. You don't need to use the same colors I'm using at any point, you just go for close. What matters are that your values are correct. The people get so worked up on having the perfect, I'm just sharpening my pencil now, but having, having the exact right color, the color's not a big deal. It's your values. Are your brights bright enough, your darks dark enough? That's what's going to make a difference, having that high contrast. And I've got to make sure my pencil's nice and sharp where I want clean edges. So around the eye for sure. Some of the edges we'll want soft, but some we want super sharp. I need to lighten it a little bit more on some of this. So I'll go on top with the ivory. Okay, actually we can use the ivory around his little fluffy face here. I swear if, if these guys, like mobs especially, I love mobs. If mobs lived longer, I would keep those as pets. So cute. I love the fluff. I know this is a butterfly, but still, the fluff is adorable. And then where I want it a bit sharper, I can come back through with this. I'm gonna use a little bit of my red violet, so any magenta to break that up and make them look fluffier. You can use black for some, but when you're dealing with yellows, it's going to typically be better if you go with magentas. And let's go through here. Just as a reminder, if you've got questions, I am not intentionally, well, no, I am intentionally ignoring you. I'm gonna answer all of them at the end of the video, so go ahead and leave them, and we'll come back to that once the project is done. Now, one of the things you want to watch, I see this mistake a lot when people do a project with butterflies and they've got multiple butterflies, they will pick one and almost copy paste it everywhere. The wings are in the exact same position. Everything's the same. Avoid that. It doesn't look good. Do you want to make sure you get variation whenever you're painting a group of butterflies like that together? Get a little bit of a lighter orange there. Now this, like where I put that terracotta, it doesn't show up well. So that would be a case where I may want to go with a more opaque pencil like the Caran d'Ache Luminance or the Derwent Drawing or Derwent Lightfast pencils. Those are going to be more opaque than my Polychromos. So that would be the reason I would switch in those cases. Yeah, let me see if Derwent Lightfast has a nice terracotta type color. They do, let's see, we've got Persian orange might work. Oh, this one looks perfect. Burnt Sienna, yes please. You can see why I like to have a, a few different brands. My three main brands I work with are going to be my Polychromos, that's the Faber-Castell, 
Derwent Lightfast and my Caran d'Ache Luminance. I also use Derwent Drawing Pencils a lot. Those are thicker. They're really opaque. They're great for smooth, like out of focus backgrounds. Love them for that, but they're limited on colors. Oh yeah, this shows up way more. This is perfect. So this one is Burnt Sienna. We've got little fluffy edges, so I'm going to make little lines coming through here. Same thing over here. I'm going to need to move my paper over a bit for that other wing. Oops. You've got a highlight with this ivory. I'm going to pull right through there. edges so just those kind of sketchy lines same thing down here we've got a fluffy bum I'm gonna use the ivory for some of these lighter spots That orange would look good. Yep, that shows up really good there for us around his face. Grab, get his legs in there. Okay, and it looks like he's got some fluff from his body that shows through there. And we've got this wing let's get that edge cleaned up you want to make sure the inside a lot of this is really fuzzy kind of out of focus those outer edges though keep those clean we don't want that to just kind of blend into the background in this one i'm pushing fairly hard at this point giving it a decent amount of pressure where i really want that to show Remember, anywhere where you push harder, you're doing what we call burnishing, and the harder you push, the more it's going to come out more smooth, more solid, but you flatten the tooth, the tooth of the paper. So that means you're not going to be able to get a lot of layers on top. So you want to keep burnishing where you're pushing really hard for areas towards the end of the work or areas you know you don't need a lot of layers on top. Um, people are asking for a close-up view. Okay. Let me see if this will work well. There we go. That should be good. I just have to remember when I get to here. Okay, I'll have to move it when we get to the flowers. That should be much better. Okay, I'm gonna come through. Oh, no, I'm, let's go back to the ivory. I've got a few more spots that need more ivory. fluffiness in here. And I don't care if these are exact. Close is good enough. But keep your details where they should be clean. Just watch for that. And really work on that contrast, that really dark, dark against the really light lights. That matters on this one. Now, one of the things that's great, if you look closely at the reference photo, some of this is kind of really grainy looking because you've got that soft, velvety look. 
that is going to happen naturally with just how the colored pencils work on the paper. Don't overblend that. I don't know if you can see this on the reference photo, but in through here, we've got this kind of grainy look. That's perfect. Now, often you'll hear me talk about, I don't like the grainy gritty look and I try to avoid it, but there are times like that where that works really well. Now I'm taking my cad dark cadmium yellow. I'm gonna go just in a few spots. I don't wanna go too crazy with this because these guys are, do have a more muted look, but I can brighten some of this a bit. Now you can, if you need to, use odorless mineral spirits over your colored pencils when you've done the pan pastels. You just have to watch that, make sure for, first that the pan pastel is sprayed. But I don't usually need to. In this case, the blending, like it's just with burnishing is enough. Some of this I will come through and detail a little bit more with black, but for now I'm just gonna use my magenta color. Because if you go on top with the black and it blends in weird with the yellow, you get this weird, ugly, green, muddy color. I want to avoid that. So while I know I'm going to need some, I'm going to hold off till the end. I'm just tinting the color here. And so I went with the polychromos. It's more translucent, not as opaque, but it's going right on top of where I had the yellow. So it works really well. Few of these areas up. Use a little bit of brown now. Let's start building. We want to create depth in this. And if we look at there, this is almost like a little armpit, fluffy little armpit, but we've got this darker area that I need to make fade out. I'll definitely need some black there. I can use the brown too to create some more of the fluff on his body without going too dark. Somebody did not sign up for Dollar Shave Club. I'm just letting that blend nicely with those pan pastels that we put down already. Okay, let's get some of these darker colors back in now. We've got this much darker spot right in his little armpit. Wing pit? I don't know, I'm making stuff up. We want to start creating those lines too, really defining those more. And don't just put random lines all over. Try to copy what you see in your reference photo. It doesn't have to be exact, but you do want to be close. It's going to look much better than if you're just putting random lines. And you may think, well, yeah, obvious, like, of course, but I see that all the time where people are like, oh, there's lines, smack, 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 and it just looks terrible. Slow down and look at your reference photo. Go for close, or at least go for close if you're not going to go for exact. Watch where the lines curve and change. Think of it more as abstract shapes. Not so much as I'm drawing a butterfly because your brain has a tendency to think, oh, I've seen plenty of those. I know what it looks like. And it really doesn't. So if you look at things, especially when you're zoomed in like this, more as abstract shapes, you're much more likely to end up with an accurate end result. Now make sure you don't cover all the brown. As you come through the here with the black, we don't want all of the brown covered. It's really important we've got both in there. little lines in between here that are just, they don't go up that far. And all these little details, they add up to a really good end result. While you're doing it, it may think, you may feel like, oh, that little detail, it's not that important. I'll just leave it out. But when you add, keep adding more and more, it really makes it look good. A line that comes through here.
separate that wing from the one underneath. Notice that I'm not going too crazy over the yellow areas. That I kind of want, it looks better if I let it transition from yellow to more magentas to brown to black. Don't just go yellow black. I'm pushing really hard for a few of these little details in here. Some little dots, a few little lines. I'm going to switch over to magenta. The magenta is going to give us a much nicer, like it'll look much more rich. You'll get a lot more depth than just jumping to black. But it'll still be dark. Because remember, it's about our values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. That matters much more than your color. So I do need more black in here. Get a few dots in there. Now, one of the things that's happening too, it's a little bit more muted. I am definitely going to want to make this brighter, like more, diff like higher contrast there. And when the darks feel like they're not dark enough, it's because my lights aren't light enough. Or the reverse, if my lights aren't light enough, it's often because my darks aren't dark enough. Or yeah, the reverse. I just said that backwards. Fish Hotel, did somebody say puppy treats? I, I have to head out, but this is stunning. Thank you. And hey, boys, you want a cookie? Yeah? You want a cookie from the person who brought us our fish? Hi. Gibson's like, no, I don't think it's real. I don't believe it's going to happen. Meh. Gibson, do you want a cookie? Really? Gibson, come. He's like, but you told me to lay down. I, I don't understand what's happening. Another one says, got to back up. Back up so they can see your huge face. There's a cookie. Oh, that is a lot of droll. Oh, my gosh, Gibson. It's very good. Well, your other one. There you go. Ew. See, thank you. Thank you for the super chat treats. Yes, good boy. Okay, go lay down. He's like, what is this get up, go down stuff? Come on. You too, Wade. Go lay down. Wade, down. Good boys. Didn't take Wade long to come get it. Gibson, lay down. We don't want to watch your bum. Lay down. Say thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, on to the butterfly. And the boys, thank you. So I'm gonna go right around the yellow tones. And let's get some richness in here between the yellow and the browns. And that's with the magenta. I'm going to brighten up some of the yellow as well. And the, the flower I won't spend quite as much time on, the butterfly. I mean, it's obviously our focus, so we want to spend a little bit extra on this guy. The flower, we're really more just focused on getting some, our values in there, like dark's dark or light's light enough. We'll have to put some color over the legs too. Now, one of the nice things, the legs I put in there with ivory, that lightened it up. And that's gonna mean that I can put the more translucent yellow on top, but the yellow will be brighter than if I just put the yellow straight over the black paper. So super helpful because you would really not see them well if I just went this, at least with the polychromos yellow. If I did uh, Derwent Lightfast yellow or Caran d'Ache Luminance yellow, those are more opaque, that would, sh would show up. But in this case, because I don't have those out, see as I go over the brown, you can see a little bit, but not a ton. Yeah, Joseph, no, Puppy Juice, also not archival. We want to keep that off the art too. No juices are archival, except apparently cow juice because the casein and the 
Spectre fix that we're using as a fixative. See how now, as I go over this with yellow, I've got a transition where it's a dark, fades from brown into that darker yellow and then into that ivory. Gives us a great fade there. Okay, I want some more of that orange, the terracotta look. So this one is the Persian orange. What was the other one I had out? Burnt Sienna. So this one's gonna be more opaque. Now we're getting to that point where I've got a lot of layers so I can start to feel it. It's going to be limited soon on how much more I can get on here. That's what happens when you push hard early on with, you, with the pencils. Okay, I'm gonna use black and really sharpen up some of these details. Actually, black and I'm gonna use a little bit of white too. Someone said they're watching the live stream next to their lab mix. Cuddle time. I think that every time the boys get a treat, everyone else's pups should too. I think that should be a rule. Everyone gets live stream treats. So I'm using white. This is the Derwent drawing, or I'm sorry, Derwent light fast white, and it's really opaque. So what it does, it's not gonna bring this back to complete white, but it will give me a nice brighter, like it's opaque. Whoops, pushed too hard, broke it. It's more opaque then surprisingly, I found it to be more opaque when I did a test than Caran d'Ache Luminance, which makes no sense. Caran d'Ache Luminance is supposed to be a higher wax content. So in theory, usually the higher wax content pencils are more opaque. Derwent Light Fast beat it. Oh, that one surprised me. I found that out while doing the video to show you that the Caran d'Ache Luminance was brighter and it wasn't. My theory was correct, the results were not. Few areas in here, brightening that up. But that's why I went with this one instead of Caran d'Ache Luminance, if you're wondering. Both would work. Um, let's see, we've got a dark row here. Just making kind of a jagged line. I want to lighten up, but not too light. Some of these areas, I'm going to switch to ivory. That's not bright enough. Yeah, the light looks better. clean up those edges with the brown. Some of those are getting a little bit messy. So a lot of what I need to do now are going to be dots on this guy. So move the paper over. Get some little details. I also want a few more highlights. So let's actually, let's get a few in there. Not too crazy. That can also be really done with dots. Gives us a nice texture. The 
magenta right around the edge. And you don't want to use too many colors on this because it would get really muddy. And I'm going to slide my paper back over. We'll finish this guy up. And then we'll move on to the flowers. And as always, I reserve the right to make minor changes before I map this, for who, or if they choose it matted, before I send it, I should say, to whoever wins the auction for this one. Usually the next day when I look at it with fresh eyes where I've not sat in front of the easel for so long, I'll have a few minor, minor things that I think will improve. Okay, now I'm going to move the camera down so I get the full flower there. There we go. And you've still got just under an hour now to bid on this guy. If you want him to live in your house. Okay, now I'm gonna switch pencils because I'm gonna need to get out more of my purples. Boys, keep everyone company. Well, you look excited. So we're gonna go through with, let's see, Heather for sure. Definitely gonna want violet. Probably nightshade for the darker colors. No one's surprised. And I think I need like a bright magenta. Or and pull both these colors out. So I've got magenta and Bordeaux pulled out. And of course, all, oh, I guess you guys can't see. There we go, all my Derwent Light Fast because they're purples and purples, like Derwent does purples better than anybody as far as Light Fast colors go. So let's start, we've got some highlights with the white here. I'm just gonna work this in little circles. I don't need too much with the white because these are already pretty light. I will need to get green out too, actually. We should do, should have done that now. Should have done that, that now. Wow, grammar much? I'm on a roll tonight. Grass green may work mixed with purple. Hey, Papa Shrimp. All my fish friends are here tonight. Are you excited for Aquashella? If you guys are not aware, Aquashella is coming in May to Dallas. So if you're there, come in, hang out, chat with me. Um, I'll have some prints there, some giclees that I don't offer online. They're like, that's pretty much the only place you can get the giclees for me. And Papa Shrimp is one of my friends there. He breeds and sells like really cool. They're freshwater shrimp, so I don't have any of his shrimp, but they're super cute. He also has a channel here on YouTube. So if you're interested in shrimp, which are weirdly cool, like if you're like, who wants shrimp? Oh no, these are cool. These are really cool shrimp. So definitely check out his channel. Um, anyway, I didn't see what he said. Finally caught a live, been a while. Hope to see you this year at the show. Oh, yep, see, I didn't even read it. I just assumed. I'm like, oh, I'll see you at Aquashella. Okay, back to work. Focus, Lisa. I get all excited when my friends are here. So this is way too white in here. So actually, I'm just going to focus on one little area and work my way down because even looking at this, I'm already getting to that point. I'm like, wait, what goes where? I'm trying to use the same color everywhere. I should take my own advice. I give you guys all the time. Pick one spot and work on it till that spot is done. So I'm going to just do up in this area first. When you try to jump around like, okay, I've got white. Where all does white go? You're going to lose your place really quickly. Things turn into a hot mess that way. And while this, especially with the flower, it doesn't need to be exact, I still want close. Well, I'll be answering your questions shortly, so keep those coming in. So 
this is the Bordeaux. It's a really deep color on when done on um, against the darks that I already have. So it's working out really well. It's not too bold, which I was a little bit worried about. Sharpen that pencil. I actually like the Bordeaux better for a lot of these shadows in the purple because everything's so dark, the Bordeaux doesn't go too, too dark because it's so much lighter on its own. But the paper being as dark as it is, let's switch and do some violet around that. I don't even know if I'll use the nightshade much because it's so dark everywhere. I lied, I am gonna use nightshade a little bit. Oh, that's blue violet, that's not nightshade. You go away. There's nightshade. So anywhere where it would be black on the artwork, I'm gonna do nightshade. It gives it more depth. Little dots for a lot of this will build that texture we want. Yeah, speaking of Aquashella, for any of you guys who want to come hang out, Aquashella.com, you can go there and get your tickets and it gives you all the information where in Dallas and all of that. But that's going to be in May. I'm excited. Let's get that Heather sharpened. None of these pencils are sharp. Yeah, the Heather looks great for a lot of these highlights. Way better than white was just too bright. But in some areas we do need lighter. And any art related questions, leave those now. We'll be coming through and answering those very shortly as soon as we finish this guy up. I'll also be talking about the biggest things that will destroy your creativity, the one biggest thing, and an idea to keep you having more ideas if you are someone who struggles with what do I paint next? the Bordeaux better than magenta there so I'll put that pencil down so this is going to be kind of dark if I go over with white it's not going to turn to white or even actually let's do with the heather it'll just lighten what's there nope white would be better And some of this, as I'm going through, I see where I what did with the Pam Pastels. It's way more green in areas it doesn't belong. It does not even matter. Work it into it. And I'm pushing pretty hard here where I want that to be more burnished. But remember, because it is being pushed on hard, I'm not going to get many layers on top. A little bit of green. I don't want too much more than the green that's already on there as far as like how bright it is. In areas that are really dark, I'm gonna push hard and do little circles here, little dots that are grouped together with a nightshade. Right up against the butterfly so that it edge is nice and clean. Like we want it frayed, but we also want it like defined. Defined frayed. Definitely need to do more of these live streams with the pan pastels. That sure saves a lot of time with blending color in. That looks so good.
So I'm just hitting here where the brightest areas are going to go. This is just a weird mess of abstract shapes, so block that in. Even the violet, it's almost as dark as nightshade. And I'll switch over to Heather where I want that to come out. I don't want it too bright right there where that one petal sticks out. And then we'll switch over to the Bordeaux. So that's our more magenta color. Mix some of that in there. Now one of the things you can do too, let's say you're having a hard time like the Bordeaux is not bright enough. Now this, ooh, that looks really dark on camera. Okay, the purples are not showing up well. Um, the butterfly looks really accurate. These have more purple, like they're definitely more, a little bit more color saturated than what you guys are seeing, unfortunately. But they, what you can do is anywhere you have white, let's say I wanted like this to fade into a, which area? Here, needs to be more of a light purple. I can put this over white first and then mix white into it and just get a lighter version. It'll be more pastel, but it does give me that lighter version. little bit with the green. This one, what is it? Grass green? Not too much. Wow, that is super muted for you guys. I apologize. is definitely one that looks better in person. The flat, again, the background, the butterfly, that's all exact. It's this that is so dark. Okay, on the stem, and straight down. And I can just let that fade out because the mat, it would cover that. Whether you get a mat from me or your own, it would cover it, so. This roughness is so perfect because everything, the butterfly and the flower, like this is all very velvety looking in the reference photo. And without giving, making any serious effort, it just looks like that on this because of the nature of the paper. Oops, that is way too bright. So I can go right over that with Heather. It's still too bright. Let's take some nightshade and tone that down. Much better. Got a little crazy there for a minute. So this is again with a nightshade. I'm gonna define some of that. Shade some edging, almost done. I'm excited about this guy. Oops. Looks like the bid is at $60, so you still have a really good chance to get this guy for a huge deal, huge deal. green in there. And all I'm 
doing is darkening up, getting that contrast in there with a few of these areas. bit more with the contrast in a couple of spots now. This is definitely something that I think I'll do some touch-ups tomorrow where I've not stared at it for so long. I'll back away from it and see what areas are maybe drawing a little too much attention. Like right now, that is drawing too much attention. So that's the sort of thing when I have fresh eyes, it'll be easier for me to look at it and go, okay, that needs to be toned down. That is not where I want my attention to land. I mean, I can do it right now, but that's the sort of thing I mean by making changes the next day with fresh eyes. I'm going to start pulling a little bit of magenta into a few of these areas, which is a brighter color than that Bordeaux I was using. Okay, so I am going to call him mostly done. I need to back this out because I want to show you how to figure out where you're going to sign your work. So you want to keep in mind, whether you are selling your work matted or the customer is going to mat it, you have to keep in mind the mat. So typically, I try to do things where it's a common, a standard size, especially in something like this, so it's easy. Like, this is an 11 by 14 inch mat. It's technically 8 by 10 in the center. The mat brings it up to an overall, like the frame size you would put this in would be 11 by 14. It's a common size. If I do something that's like 10 inches by 4 inches, cool, unique, needs a custom mat, kind of pain in the butt. So by in something like this where I want to make it available that you can have an already ready mat, go with a common size, definitely makes your life easier. Now I don't mean limit your art. If the art you have in mind just requires an odd size, go for it. But do keep in mind, it is going to be a bit of a pain for framing when it's a weird size. So just something to keep in mind. So what we're going to do is hold this up Figure out about where that's going to set. This looks so much better in person. Okay, and then we're going to sign it. And I'm going to use Heather. I don't want something too bright, too dark. And what I will typically do is take my pencil and hold it. Where do I think that would balance everything out and look nice? Now, I was thinking here. No, nope, the weight of it here. So what you want to consider, every element you add to a piece, and this I'll hold up so you can see in a second that uh, the other camera should show the magenta better, but every element you add, what even as simple as a signature, that signature, I put it here, it pulls, it adds weight. It's pulling the artwork down in this area. If I add it here, it pulls the artwork here. We want this to set and feel balanced when it's hanging on the wall. You don't want to feel like this area is too heavy and like if given the chance would make the painting sit lopsided, if that makes sense. So what I like to do is just put a little mark, like what would it look like here? What would it look like here? I don't like the weight that my signature here would cause, even though it almost makes more sense because it's a small area. I actually like the look here, the weight where it pulls it down. So I'm going to sign right here. And the reason that I hold the mat there first is I want to be able to see where, let's zoom that in a bit, where that should be. I can't really see that. There, we, That is super dark, oh my gosh. So that's unfortunate, but you get the idea. I'm gonna sharpen that pencil. And I'm using a color that is already in the artwork everywhere else. So it doesn't, you don't want your signature to be so crazy that it draws all the attention to the signature. But your signature does add weight, and especially in something like this. So there is my signature. And then let me show you again what that would be like matted, where that sets. So this just feels like it has a nicer weight to me than it did over here. I just felt like this side was just a bit too heavy. Now I don't want it too dark and actually even there, 
because that is so light. I'm going to tone it down just a bit by going over it with purples. So it's not so bright. It doesn't look that bright to you guys, but trust me, in person it is. There we go. Little bit toned down there. Now, let me see if on the other camera, if the magenta shows a bit better. Oof. Oh, yeah, you can see that. It's closer, not exact. The magentas aren't showing as much. It's definitely a more rich purple in person at least on my camera, my monitor, but that gives you a pretty good idea of what you're getting there for anyone who bids on this guy. So this is almost too blown out in per I just touched it. Um, this is almost too much too blown out in person compared to what it is, or in on camera. It's wanting to hype up that contrast for some reason. Where is my soft tool? I just smudged that a bit. Just a little, make sure that's nice and soft anywhere where it needs to be. And we're good. We are done with that guy. So I will be answering your questions in just a, mo in just a moment. And let's go, what did we want to talk about? Okay, so if you are somebody, this is a, co a common thing people talk about all the time. They have a hard time, just can't come up with an idea, I don't know what to paint. And so much time gets wasted that you're not, getting anything done. And I often say just paint anything and that's still true. But one of the things that can make it easier is to come up with a theme, an element that you're going to include in multiple paintings. Maybe plan on the next 10 paintings you do are going to have this one element. Maybe it's a chickadee. Every painting could be separate or, you know, completely different, but they all have that chickadee. What will happen is while you're working on one painting, it may be as simple as a chickadee on a fence. You just found one reference photo. But as you work, you're already thinking, well, how am I going to include this chickadee next time? What is he going to be with? A fork. You could do a fork could be your element or a dandelion. I've done that multiple times. I may have a dandelion dandelion coming out of a crack in one painting, coming out of the sand at a beach in another painting, a dandelion sitting in a cup with a scene behind it, a dandelion in front of the Eiffel Tower. Like there's always a dandelion, completely different paintings, nothing in common except that dandelion. Well, a lot of them had the, the cracked ground in common, but you, that one element makes it very easy to already have one thing decided about your next painting. That might be the thing that helps keep you constantly moving and jumping from one project to another just because you knew to start with what that one element would be. So that is something that you can start doing now that can really help you to constantly have new ideas flowing in. And you don't have to stick with it. I mean, if you come up with a different idea and you want to do that first, great. But the point is you're keeping your mind constantly thinking, what, how am I going to include this dandelion? In the, in the next painting so that it's still unique, but it has the dandelion. It looks different than the others. That constantly keeping your mind thinking, constantly coming up with ideas, you will see your creativity just explode because you're constantly thinking. But because that one element was there, you weren't just thinking, oh, what should I do? I have no ideas. You have your base, the base of your idea. Now, the dandelion or whatever your element is, it doesn't have to be the focus of the painting. It just needs to be included. But just knowing that one thing that you're going to include, it's almost like you have an assignment to get started in an easy way. Like when you look at a project, you know, like, I don't know where to start. I don't even know where to come up with an idea. You already got one idea. You have one element there going to make your life much easier and coming up with future ideas. And always think about it too. While you're working on one painting, try to keep in mind, like have in the back of your head, what, what's my next painting going to be? Be ready to jump into the next one right away. Don't sit around wasting time trying to come up with an idea. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, this will destroy your creativity. The one thing, procrastination. You're thinking of ideas, but you never go to the easel. You, you're Maybe you're at work and an idea hit your head, maybe the dandelion. You thought, hey, I'm going to paint a dandelion. And you get home and you get caught up with other things, with Netflix, with whatever other things, laundry, but you never put that idea to paper, the idea, chances of you ever picking up the idea of ever actually accomplishing it aren't likely. That procrastination on your idea will absolutely destroy your creativity. It will destroy your productivity too. Don't procrastinate. And I do it all the time. I can't tell you how many ideas I've had that are good. I actually really want to draw a mermaid or paint a mermaid. I haven't gotten to. I've wanted to do that for years. I've procrastinated. And so you know what's never been done? Me painting a mermaid. Well, not, not since I was a kid. But I, these ideas, if you procrastinate, chances of you doing them are not likely. What can you do then? What if you're just too busy? Or what if you're working on another painting? Because you know I've said this multiple times. If you have a hard time finishing work, you always finish everything before you start a new project. 
Well, what do you do if you have that idea? You don't want to procrastinate. You'll lose the idea. It won't get done. Sketchbook. Keep a sketchbook on your lunch break, in the morning while you have your coffee, whatever it is, sit there and sketch, start working on sketching the idea in those free moments, times that you're not really going to spend dedicated at the easel those other in in between times, sitting in the car waiting to pick up a kid from school, whatever it is, then sit there and sketch your ideas out. Get them on paper. And you can work on that idea the next day. That idea can be dragged out where you keep adding little elements, adding different ideas, adding things to it or changing it, whatever. But you want to get that idea on the paper. And a sketchbook is a great way to go for just jotting, starting to jot down things, but do it as fast as possible. If you put that off, chances of you ever getting to it are nearly zero. The amount of ideas I've had and lost because of that, I can't even tell you over the years. Like it's it's kind of crazy how many ideas that were like, that's such a good idea and it's gone because I procrastinated. So if you can at least sketch it, that will help. And again, I the one thing I do want to do as a dis, or say as a disclaimer, don't stop your current project to work on the new idea. If you get into that habit, you will end up with a closet full of 20 unfinished paintings. Finish what you're currently having. One of the great things is, is while you're you're working on the current painting, but you have a new idea you're excited to do, I use that as, an, uh, as a way to get me to hurry up and finish what I'm working on. I don't mean rush through it. I mean just focus, sit down, get it done. So Because I want to start the new thing and I'm not allowed to start the new thing until I finish the current thing. So while I don't don't want you to lose your current ideas because you're working on one, do put it in a sketchbook while you finish the other thing. Keep working on it on the sketchbook so you don't lose it and then go to it when you're done with your current project. So those are my tips for you today. Okay, let's go over some of your questions. So you've got 30 minutes to bid on this guy. And let me pull these up. Buttons are hard. Oh, we don't have questions coming through yet. Oh, here, oh, there they just showed up. That's a lot. Okay. So first question comes from Kojak73. Says, hi, Lisa, when you're using the ladies makeup tools, at what point do you switch to the soft tools? The ladies tools are much cheaper, so I like to use those as long as possible. Do you mean like the eyeshadow ones? Hold on. Like the makeup tools, do you mean these guys here? I only use those if I have a two super tiny area and I have a lot of, I don't know if you can see all the white ones in there. I have a lot, I hardly ever use them honestly. I use the soft tools. The soft tools last a really, really long time and I like the different shapes. I mean, I can wipe it, I can do a whole project with one sponge, I just keep wiping it off or flipping it over. So. I only use those if I want that specific shape. They're a little awkward to hold because you're likely, let me pull one out. I'll show you what I mean. It's not that they can't be useful. It's that when you're using them, you have to hold them kind of like this and it's so easy, it's hard, they're awkward to hold and have much control over what you're doing. And they're small, look how small that is. So when I use that versus, I mean, look at the difference in size, how much more I can fill in so I'm less likely to have that really blotchy look. Now, sometimes that's cool, sometimes you want that. I didn't, certainly didn't hear, but it's this, see how they're shaped? It's shaped like a palette knife. It's very natural to hold without when I'm working it, I'm not rubbing my hand or hitting my hand on the artwork. When I do this, I constantly hit my nails, the back of my fingers. It's very, very awkward to use those. So they're my favorite. I rarely use those little guys. I'd say only when I want a little area, but even then I'm better off for little areas. I switch to the triangle guy. So this one here, I'll switch to that for little areas for that. It's even smaller with a point than this. Well, it's kind of small. There you go. It, it's just more practical in that case. So I, again, I almost never use those. I just don't find them to be that practical. They're kind of my backup. Like, oh, I need something really quick and I don't want to change the sponge and it's just one little area. Then I may grab that. But for most of it, I don't use them often. Julie said, hi, so glad you're live streaming again. I've been a fan of your channel on, a, on and off for a long time. Just joined Patreon to start arting again. Thanks so much. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. You know, this would be a good time for the boys to give you their message. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. 
Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. I need to make some new ads, but I've been very busy. So moving on. Um, thank you, Julie, for joining Patreon. I'm glad you're back. Ho well, there's tons of projects for you, so you should be busy for a while. But over 300, you're definitely going to be busy for a while. Maria said, I love the look of the pan pastels. I was wondering, could you use them for like the background of another medium such, a, such as acrylic or oil? Pros and cons. I see absolutely no benefit to using them as an underpainting for oil or acrylic. The thing, or oil, yeah, th I did say that right. The thing with the, like in this case, I can't put oils or acrylic pen paints under colored pencil. So the, actually, eh, not totally true. I could do a wash with acrylics and then go on top. It's just not practical. This is practical. But when it when you're counting like, I mean, details work better in, on paper. The, the pan pastels work best on paper or like sanded paper. They can some E10s, anything like that. Oils and acrylics, not ideal. For oils and acrylics to work well, I would want them on something that's been gessoed if I'm going to use paper. Pan pastels now are not ideal for that. Like they're just not mediums that work well together. Some mediums for mixed medium are amazing. Like pan pastels, colored pencil work amazing. I've seen people do marker and then colored pencil on top. Looks amazing. I've seen one of my favorites, watercolor and colored pencil on top. That they just play nice together. They work really well. I see absolutely no, like oils will get you that blended look. Why use pan pastels when oils can get the exact same look? Um, acrylics, if they're a little bit more of a pain to get that same look, but they can still do it too. So I don't really see any benefit to doing pan pastels as a base to oil or acrylic or even on top. Like they're just not mediums that I see any pros at all to, to mixing. And I love pan pastels. That just wouldn't be like, and you know, you guys know I use all of these mediums regularly. I, not oils enough. I need to do more. The horse behind me agrees, but they're, they, they just don't play nice together. Like they, they, I just don't see a benefit to doing it. Could you do it? Maybe, sure. But I could also cut my entire lawn with scissors and I don't see the benefit. You know, like I don't see where that would help in any way. Okay. Next. Um... Fran says, an artist on your MeWe group has been sharing her art that she's doing with Daniel Smith watercolor sticks that are wonderful. Would you consider a demonstration of those? Yeah, I would have to buy them. I mean, that's always the thing is uh, if I don't have them, I can't demonstrate them. But that's, yeah, I have to look into that. I'm going to need to check into that. Uh, Paul said, what makes vivid purple mix? Ultramarine blue or phalo blue to quidonkadonk, quidonkadonk, we know I can't say it, magenta. So phalo blue is going to be closer to green on the color wheel, whereas ultramarine blue is color closer to purple. For me, I prefer the color that's already closer to purple. So again, ultramarine blue and magenta would be what I would mix together myself. Yes, Love said, hi, Lisa, love the horse portrait behind the dogs. Was that done in oils or acrylics? It's an oil over acrylic. So I'm currently finishing up the oil portion on top. He's almost done. So I'll probably finish him up tomorrow night. But, um, and then I've got to do the video for you guys or for Patreon. But yeah, that one's oil over acrylic. It could be done in all of one or all the other, but by mixing oil and acrylic, I get to take advantage of the best of both worlds. The fast dry time of acrylic for all those sharper details, all the little fur marks, and then the slow dry time of oil for that smoother blending, that more like depth in the glazing method and how slow that dries. Jen said, have you ever thought about making a video of just your freehand sketches? Your finished works are great, but I'd love to see some of your studies of un or unfinished doodles. You know, that's a good idea. I should. I Well, I started my sketchbook and I haven't been keeping up with it lately. Like I just remembered I was moving stuff around yesterday and it fell out of on, on one of the shelves over here. I was like, wow, I was supposed to be doing that every day and it just slipped my mind. I've got to get that in that habit again. Yeah, that would be a, a cool video. The problem and the reason that you don't see me freehand in my videos, you can't tell a difference between my finished freehand work or trace work. Like it, it all looks the same because I can freehand just fine. It's that it takes more time and I freehand best working flat, looking down. It's just weird the way I work and the way I'm comfortable working when I freehand to draw to try to record it. Like I can't do it upright at an easel and get accurate at all. I have to do it flat. So that's just me. Um, let's see. 
Shailo said, hi, Lisa, how much pressure are you using? It seems like heavier pressure with less layers. Yeah, I'm definitely pushing heavier on this one because I didn't want to blend anything out. I mean, why use OMS? It's small, so I just didn't. But um, I that meant burnishing, pushing harder. And I kind of explained that as I was going, which areas I was pushing harder. But yeah, I was definitely adding more, more pressure than I typically would, knowing I wasn't going to put a bunch of layers on top, so I wanted it to look smooth from the beginning. But if it was like a large piece, my hand, my arthritis cannot handle that. So uh, then I would have been using odorless mineral spirits and multiple layers. And so I would have used lighter layers and multiple layers to get that finished result. But this was small enough that it, it was fine. Serving Artist Collective said, after the art questions are answered, what books are you reading lately? So, okay, these are super cheesy, like teen books, but I've been reading the, what is it? The, not, there's another Elementals book that is horrible. I tried that horrible but this one hold on I'll pull it up it's weird because the author is um if I didn't know better I would think she was like an 80 year old lady like she uses words that we don't use or, or that you, kids don't use these days like my sweetheart instead of my boyfriend um I can't wait to see my sweetheart like no one talks like that um like there are a lot of terms she uses like um trying to think of some of them but it's a lot of terms that like my grandma uses who's like 90 that you just don't hear people talk like to like super often so I have a feeling that the author's actually very old I could be wrong but that's kind of weird but it's called The Elementals by A.L. Knorr K-N-O-R-R and it starts with like you've got a mermaid you have a fire elemental girl you've got they're like teenage girls you've got it's cute it, cute I don't know whatever it's been entertaining I like it it's super cheesy they're not good books like we're not talking Harry Potter level good we're not talking like 1984 where it's just written well you're not talking about good authors or um it's like something like that you're talking it's just entertaining it's kind of like watching something on the CW like the kids type you know teeny teen shows and apparently I don't know my age and I love them but I've been going through it's a whole series I love it. I really like the character she's developed. It You have to sometimes kind of ignore it. The author's not, or not the author, the narrator is also kind of terrible in that she sounds old too. So you've got these teenage girls who sound like they are 60 years old and have smoked for much of their life. So it's kind of weird. But yeah, that's what I've currently been, been reading. And there was one other book I was reading as well. I don't remember what it was right now. Um, there are some good ones too, like actual good books. Um, but that's the one that I'm currently right now reading. Let's see. But yeah, there's a lot of books called The Elementals and I've tried some of them because I love the, con I love fantasy stuff or like supernatural stuff and all that. I don't like realistic things at all. Well, except apparently 1984, that's way too realistic. But um, they are, these are just, they're fun. They're kind of lighthearted and, but there's so many element books on elementals that are some of the worst things I've ever, like just painful to get through. So this one I really like by that author, even if she words things weird. Um, let's see. Katie said, forgot to at you for the question. I've seen some people use watercolor paper for colored pencils. Is that a good idea? What kind of paper is good? So this is going to be personal preference. Mine, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm just going to do straight colored pencil and I'm going to blend it and I, I'm going for super realistic and I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits, I love hot press watercolor paper. Arches is hands down my favorite. I used to like, so if you've seen some of my older videos where I recommend Fabriano Artistico extra white hot press watercolor paper, they changed their formula and they're kind of terrible now. Like I wouldn't, I don't recommend them. I don't buy them. I mean, it's not that you can't produce something good on them. I'm not giving them any more money for like lesser quality. I feel, I, I just don't like them. Um, the Arches Hot Press Watercolor, 140 pounds. That is like hands down my go-to paper now. Love it. I also really like the Canson Me 10. So this is technically more of intended for like pastels and charcoals, but it works good too. I'm going to get smoother. Like I want like photorealistic work. Then I'm going to go with the hot press watercolor paper. You can also go with sanded paper is really good. But the sanded paper I'm going to use if I either do a pan pastel background with the colored pencils or if I'm going to blend with powder blender. If I'm using the powder blender products from brush and pencil, which are wonderful, it, it takes some getting used to. So if you've tried it, you're like, this isn't for me. Give your, give it a chance. Do a few pieces with it. Like they're so, once you get the hang of it, because I was kind of like, mm, I don't know when I first started. Actually, my first project I had to toss because it was terrible. I couldn't finish it. I had to start again. But that is really good. But that I use on the Lux Archival sanded paper. So those are, are my go-tos for a colored pencil watercolor hot press arches hot press watercolor paper lux archival sanded paper and only lux archival because the other ones fisher 400 and uart as it turns out they're not archival on the back uart's the worst 
you are, I feel like they're kind of, they're, 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 they're shady. Let's go with that. And they lied or made stuff up about how the artists who questioned them, oh, we don't know what we're talking about because it's only on the back. Yeah, that soaks through the front. It's not archival. It's not archival. So I don't trust them. Um, but yeah, UART is my go-to, or not UART, sorry. <laughs> UART is my not go-to. Uh, words. Lux Archival, that is my go-to of sanded paper, but hot press watercolor paper, wonderful. Don't get cold press watercolor paper or rough watercolor paper for using colored pencils though. It's too toothy, it's really rough. Imagine you've got a textured wall and you're trying to, or like a brick and you're trying to colored pencil on it, that's using cold press watercolor paper. Like it, it's not good for colored pencils. So those are my go-tos. Let's see, what do we have next? Florida said, any tips for keeping safe from pastel, pan pastel, dust inhalation? I wear a mask and tap off extra dust gently, but I wonder if there are any tips I'm missing. So this is not something that I can give you a lot of advice on. I have seen some scary things from people that were breathing in like regular pastels. It kind of scared me enough that I'm like, ooh, I don't even want to like try to make myself get comfortable with them. Pan pastels, there's not really any, there's not much dust. Like charcoal has more dust. Uh, regular pastels have more dust. Pan pastels, I don't worry about, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm not going to claim to be an expert here, but I just don't see that dust fluffing up like what happens with regular pastels, at least not how I work. And it may be a difference of how I work or the paper that I'm using. But I've read some scary stuff with pan, with pastels. I would do a search on YouTube or Google and see what people who work in pastels, what they're comfortable with, because some of that's kind of scary. You know what also is scary? Resin. Oh my gosh. I have watched some videos of people who got so sick and so messed up from using resin without proper masks. And like, it's not just a normal, like N95 mask. You would need something way heavier duty with that stuff. Ooh, that's scary. So do your research because some supplies that people use are not so safe. Um, let's see. But the point is, I'm not going to give any advice because I genuinely don't know. And that's kind of a serious thing when you're talking about medical stuff. Like those aren't me. I don't work in pastels. Like I do pan pastels, but regular pastels, I don't work in it all. So I've not put the time into researching it. I've just seen stuff like in passing and I, I can't say whether or not it's true, but it sounded scary. <coughs> um, let's see. Dolphin Soul said, did you sell enough last week to get your new computer? Sort of. Maybe I'm close. Um... I have, I had money saved already, so I can put some of that towards it. Now it's choosing which computer to like for what I need. I'm trying to get my husband to help with picking that out because he knows more about that stuff than me. But it's like, do we need, he said, now I don't need a good graphics card. I need a good processor. I don't know. I, all I know is I have four higher end webcams that I want it to hook up to and this one can't handle it. So we're trying to figure out, he needs to do some research for me on that. Um, he's studying for IT stuff, so maybe he'll come across some information there. Let's see. Lourdes said, I can't see, sorry. I'm like doing the old lady. I need bifocals. Actually, that was suggested to me. Um, Lourdes said, also, have you ever used one of those gessos made for drawing mediums like golden pastel ground? Good sandpaper can be expensive, and I'm wondering if there's any benefit. I've not tried it, so I can't say there. Those are my answers for, for anything pastel. I don't know. Helpful, right? Jason Morgan may know more. You can check with him because he does a lot with pan with pastels. I don't know if he's done much research with like the masks and all that, but I would I would see with him and just do a search and see. Like I would do a Google search for like pastels da and dangerous. Put those words together and see like what warnings you could find. But look into it because sometimes I mean we've all seen this. There are people out there who will fear monger anything. Like oh my god, the comb that brushed your hair, or all your hair is gonna fall out because you used a comb. Like I've seen some weird fear mongering stuff. So it's not that I believe everything. Thing, but start researching like you've got to start somewhere start with that and see what you can come up with and also you can contact the company who makes the art supply if they're a good company and they're reputable golden I would trust you can um, golden's like some of the bigger brands I would ask them what their suggestion is to keep safe they're probably going to know the most and have to be more honest with that they're not as likely a fear monger for no reason um let's see Jay said, what, what tricks do you use to get a smooth look to colored pencils in the background? Do you use circular ma uh, marks with lots of dots uh, or lots of layers? Sorry. So it depends on what paper I'm using. If I'm working on hot press watercolor, and it also depends on what pencil I'm using. So let's say 
my normal go-to, if I'm not using the brush and pencil products, if I'm working on a hot press watercolor paper, I'm gonna work that pencil in small circles, little ovals, and do a lot of layering. But if I'm using, and that's gonna be if I'm using polychromos, less so, but I'll still do it with the Caran d'Ache Luminance. If I use Derwent Drawing or Derwent Light Fast Pencils, I can be so freaking sloppy, like crazy sloppy. And when I go over it with OMS, it blends out smooth. So it depends on the paper, it depends on the pencil. Like there are definitely some factors in there on what techniques, but my normal like go-to recommendation has always been the small circles, small ovals, lots of light layers, and I will build up. That's gonna give you a more solid look. So definitely the case for polychromos. Not as, you don't have to be as picky with trying to keep those light layers like that to get a smooth finish with the Caran d'Ache Luminance. And then of course, the Derwent Light Fast, I can be super sloppy and they usually will blend out smooth. Now that's not to say that Polychromos aren't as good as the other brands. They're a different pencil, they're oil-based. The Polychromos, their real strength is in how sharp of a point you can get to it. They're a stronger lead and getting that little detail. Polychromos, hands down my go-to there. Whereas the pencils with a higher wax content, and I know it, Derwent Light, Derwent just, got confusing on this because they listed the Derwent Light Fast pencils as being oil-based in practice. Now, all of the pencils are a combination of oil, clay, wax, all kinds of stuff. But with the Derwent, their Light Fast pencils, they feel in practice more like a higher wax content, which typically means more opaque, and it's going to blend out smooth more smoothly than a higher oil-based content pencil. So them listing that kind of made it a little confusing because in practice, they don't feel like an oil-based pencil to me at all. They're just kind of that nice in-between balance of all the pencils. Like they're, they're really getting up there on, on some of my favorites, but the Polychromos where if I'm trying to fill something in really solid, let's say they're my only pencil I'm working with, I can make just fine. I can make it look as smooth as the Derwent Drawing, Derwent Light Fast, or Caran d'Ache. I'm just going to do those smaller circles. I'm going to work in a light in more layers and be a little bit more cautious on that technique where I can be super sloppy for a background, like a smooth out of focus background can be super sloppy with Derwent Drawing or Derwent Light Fast and they blend out so well. You've still got 12 minutes to bid on our butterfly painting, which looks better in person. This is way more purple in through here. And then remember, you've got the option if you want me to mat it or not. You can mat it yourself. Like these mats you can get at Michael's or wherever. They're not expensive. I think, I want to say at Michael's, they run about 5 or $6 a piece. So you can do this yourself. Now, the ones that Michael's don't come with a backing that I do, I do put a backing on mine. So mine is slightly higher quality, but it's something you can certainly do on your own. Um, I just, I have to charge more because I have to pack it in a bigger box and because it makes it so much bigger and ship it differently. It costs more to ship. Okay. Um, what do we have next? Pamela said, you should check out Carrie... M Meniscalos, I just butchered that name, book. She's listed as a young adult author, but I really enjoyed her books. I'm going to screenshot that comment, and I will. Uh, Dale said, struggling with portraits looking realistic. Any advice? Thank you. Love all your... Well, what medium is it? So that that may be part of it. I wish I had a, a photo of what you are, are doing so I could look at them better. But for... Um, oh, Weird. Nick, the link shows to me that you linked the product to bid on. It's an Essex butterfly, but it shortened it for you for the YouTube chat, and it's listed as product, and it just shows X dash butt X butt. Um, that's kind of funny. Anyway, um, we've got a couple more suggestions. Hold on, I'm gonna screenshot that because I'm always needing more books. I go through books so fast because I I listen. That's I work nonstop. Like I don't really watch much in the way of TV or take a break. So if I listen to an audiobook while I'm doing my paintings, it makes it feel a little bit. Oh, come on, you're not. Oh. oh, the chat's not on this way. I'll have to do that later. Okay. So what were we talking about? Focus, Lisa. Struggling with portraits looking realistic. So tip one to make realistic looking portraits. You've got to have a solid foundation drawing. If your drawing is not perfect, you are not ready to add the color or let's say you're working in graphite, you're not ready to start shading. You have to have a, I mean, perfect. Your eyes need to be in the right location. Now you don't need tons of tiny detail. It can be loose in that you just have like the general outline of the face, kind of the shadow or the nose and the mouth and the eyes and the, the hair. Close is okay 
as far as not needing a ton of tiny detail, but they have to be in the right location. When you start adding color, no matter what medium you're working in, it's not going to get better. You're not going to fix it. So if your drawing is not perfect and you're thinking, oh, I'll fix it once I start in with the color, I'll fix that. It's okay that the eyes are too close together right now. I'm going to fix that when I start painting. No, you're not. You're just going to fight with it. You're going to have nonstop problems. So first tip for realistic portraits, accurate portraits, accurate drawing. I don't care if that means you trace. I don't care if that means you freehand. You use whatever medium or method is comfortable for you, but use, get it perfect. What happens, and a lot of people will do this, they feel like they're only going to improve if they freehand. And there are people who teach this. I've been teaching painting and drawing since 1999. I'm old. I've been doing this a long time. I have seen what, what helps most people, and everyone's going to be slightly different, but I've seen like the majority of people are going to improve if they're tracing something and working from an accurate base drawing, then if they freehand it, do a crap job and then try painting that, they're not improving very fast. Yeah, they might get better over time, but chances are they're going to make the same mistake again and again and again and again. And it's just continuously bad. And what happens when you keep making the same mistake, your brain starts seeing that and assuming it's accurate. Oh, you're used to seeing a nose misshaped or eyes misshaped. You're used to seeing it wrong and your brain starts to kind of delude, delude, no, um, delusions starts to, the words, they're very hard right now. It starts to convince you it lies. It's just a big old liar. It lies and tells you that what you're doing is correct, even though it's clearly not correct. And anyone else who comes up and looks at that is going to be like, whoa, that's a thing. So that happened. So may, I, if, you, if somebody traces, on the other hand, over and over and over again, they will start to learn to recognize when th something is accurate or not. They can look at something and go, that's off. There, there's something wrong with that. So they're more likely to learn, more likely to pinpoint what is wrong. Tracing, I have found people to learn to draw more accurately faster. Tra and I don't mean be dependent on forever tracing. Let's say, I use this example all the time, you get a rose. You freehand it 10 times by your 11th time, 12th time. Hopefully you've gotten some better, but chances are you're just making the same mistake again and again and again. Same person, have them trace it 10 times. By that 11th time, 12th time freehanding it, so you trace it 10 times, next time you go ahead and, and freehand it, you'll be near perfect. Because you did it correct again and again and again. You're teaching your brain to see things accurately versus freehanding it, doing it wrong, and your brain going, meh looks right to me. So that is a big deal. Start with that accurate foundation. Trace it, freehand it, don't care. It needs to be accurate. So that is step one to an accurate, getting an accurate, realistic portrait. The next thing is going to be on your values. We have a tendency to focus too much on color. I just, if I knew what color it would be. No, don't worry so much about colors. Get your lights light enough, your darks dark enough. Having your highlights in the right place, your shadows in the right place, this determines your underlying bone and muscular structure. You don't just want to put a highlight for the cheek because you're like, oh, we want to highlight there. You put that highlight in the wrong place and it is not the same person. You can really see this if you watch makeup videos where people will turn their face into a completely, they don't even look like the same person. You put highlights, we do contouring for our cheekbones and highlights in different places. You can change the shape of your nose just by how you do the contouring with makeup. And it, it creates an illusion. It's the same thing with our artwork. When you are painting and drawing and you put a highlight in a random location and the chin like is high, the highlights here instead of here, completely change the look of that face. So you need to make sure that things are very, very accurate with that. Don't even worry so much. People get caught up too on blending. I've got to have perfectly smooth blending. Your blending doesn't even matter. Do it impressionistic if you need to. But your lights need to be in the right place. Your darks need to be in the, the right place. You need to have your eyes, your nose. That needs to be in the right place. Get those things accurate and get the higher contrast. So another thing that people have a tendency to do is make everyone's skin way too light. I have seen so many white Will Smith portraits. Like it's... It's painful. So do you, we usually are too light when we do portraits. Even somebody who has very fair skin, we have a tendency to just leave the paper white. No, the skin, if you look at like graphite, put it in black and white, that's always a, a, a good way to look at the photo. But if you do a portrait in graphite, even my skin, you wouldn't believe how dark I need to go to make it look realistic. So that's going to be another tip. So a couple of tips on making more realistic portraits. Five more minutes on the bid bidding for this uh, the butterfly and colored pencil and pan pastels. My tongue is getting all tongue tied. I'm really tired. Let's see. Pulling up Discord. Here we go. Lourdes said, did Fabriano's paper quality go down? I couldn't know because I haven't used it for so long. Is it anything that would affect the archival quality to make certain mediums more difficult? 
or make certain mediums more difficult. So yeah, quality completely went down. It still should be archival. I don't think that that is an issue. I could be wrong. I don't know. You are, says theirs is archival and we know that it's not acid free on the back. So there we go. But I think more companies are a little bit more trustworthy than, um, only my opinion. I'm not making a legal statement. Um, I think that they're fine as far as being archival. And I still have some of the newer, not new, new, but I had when it started to change. I have some of that here. I'll use it eventually. It's it's okay. I just don't like it as much as I used to. And I like the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper better still. So that's, yeah, it, it's just different to work on. Like I find, now I don't know, I have not bought it in years, but I was buying it right after it recently changed. And like the first change that we all knew about. That one, um, they claim that it shouldn't have been changed. Like, I think they started printing money or something on their paper, their um, whatever, their machines. And they said that it should have been the same, but all of us who've used it knew it wouldn't take as many layers anymore. Watercolor artists especially hated it, but or hated the change. It just, Even with colored pencils, I found that it doesn't need as many layers to get a smooth finish, but it won't take as many layers, and that's a negative for me. So I just wasn't a huge fan myself. I know some people still use them and love them. I actually like it better now. I'll use it for graphite more likely than colored pencil, because graphite, I'm not as picky about the paper that I use as I am with colored pencil. Colored pencil, the results are more dependent, and, and yeah, it makes a bigger deal. I find than graphite. I mean, graphite ma matters, but not as much as it does for me with colored pencil or let's say watercolor. Three minutes left to bid on the butterfly. And let's see. Oh, I've got stuff coming in to spam that shouldn't be going to spam. Let's report not spam. I apologize if you ever email me and I never, ever respond and it's like a question, especially with the Patreon ones. Like, first off, contact me through Patreon's always the better. Well, I don't always see those right away, but eventually I do see those. So much lately has been going to spam that shouldn't have and I don't know why. So, yeah, that I just in spam found somebody's question about something that I will need to hmm okay Carolyn I will email you later if you're watching because I have no idea why that problem is happening I'll we'll have to look into it Dell said you're working with acrylics mostly so the acrylics I don't do portraits in acrylics I don't like them they're can I do them yes but you figure that's the one medium I've really mastered. I mean, I, I'm good at all of the, that sounds super cocky. I'm good at all of the mediums I work in. Maybe not as much with watercolor. Paper. I can make it look good though. Um, but I'm not like an, a watercolor expert is my point. Anyway, moving on. Acrylics, one of my primary mediums. Acrylics and colored pencils are like my two I've done, I've used the most over the years. That, even with me, I don't like acrylics for, for portraits because they're so much easier to do in either colored pencil or um, oil paints are my go-to for portraits with acrylics. And underpainting, sure, but the way that I blend and the way that I like to do portraits, I'm not a huge fan of portraits and acrylics. So may, you may want to try some oils. I don't know. That's just my preference. And this is from somebody whose favorite medium is acrylics. So, uh, and colored pencil. But you, and ink tents. I really like ink. I need to do an ink tent soon. Anyway. Point is that I don't love the blending and I don't know, I've just never loved the results I got. I haven't tried that much, but like just the, the nature of how that blends. You're going to use oh, my big one for getting the smoother blending. Use your fine mist sprayer. Now, I know plenty of people who do acrylics with color with acrylics and they get great results, but it's really really like it's just so much more difficult with acrylics than mo than most other mediums so it's not my favorite there I don't know how helpful that is to you but um focus more really focus on getting your values correct getting your base drawing correct if you can get those two mastered the rest is not going to be so hard yeah Karen says I don't think you can beat arches I don't think so either I absolutely love them love it <laughs> Karen, that's awesome. Karen says, Patreon is only $4 a month. And Nick responded, yes, with instant access to over 300 full-length videos. Oh my gosh, this is like the best advertisement ever. Karen said, that's incredible. Finally, an artist I can afford. Well, the great thing too with my Patreon, I've been doing it for so long. I started in what, 2015? 
2015, no, the end of 2014. Oh no, it's been a long time. I do a new one every week. There have been very few times that I missed that. Like a couple times I was sick. It's rare that I miss a week. There are so, my library of lessons, you in, $4, you get access to all y- those years of them. Now I try to make the lessons better as time goes on. I've improved, like I've got downloadable steps now. And so they've, all, they've obviously gotten better. But those lessons, that is like, God, what, nine years? Um almost nine years of lessons. So yeah, with a new one every week, that is a lot of lessons. That's I've, I, I like to do that sometimes and look at other artists. Um, and not that I'm bashing anyone, but I look at other artists and how they do their, their Patreon lessons. And one of the things that's so great about what I'm doing, God, I'm being cocky tonight. One of the things that's so great about the way that I'm doing as far as you as the, the viewer goes, I mean, I work nonstop. I don't take days off. So there's that. But you get a new one, even at $4. You get all my videos. There's no restriction to videos. There's other rewards for the higher tiers, obviously, but you get every single video and you get the whole thing. Whereas I was looking at some other YouTubers that were doing Patreon for their art lessons and you got one a month. No, they're great. I'm sure they're amazing. And I think for the price, it's still worth it. I'm not bashing them at all, but you get so much content with me. So in multiple mediums. So if you get bored with one, there's plenty others for you. So that's uh, let's see. Donna said, Lisa, what can I use not OMS with pencils? Uh, powder blender. Um, some people like, what's that one? The orange zest it. Some people like that too. Um, some people don't use any. Some people just burnish the whole thing. So that's also an option for you. So yeah, we are at 10.02. So let's see. I'm just curious. Does it say, why isn't it notifying me when the auction ended? That auction should have ended. Did it end? Hold on. Let me make sure because I might have messed it up when I reset up the new one. Let's take a look. Come on. It doesn't want to load. Load. Oh, I totally get it. Karen said, I'm not bashing other artists' prices either because it's it's not overpriced, but it's a lot of us can't afford it, especially after COVID. Oh, absolutely. That's why, if you notice, I haven't even raised my prices since 2014. And eventually I'm going to need to because the cost of postage is horrible. Like that has gone up so much since I started this. The cost of making the prints, the cost of the cost of everything, all like all of that has just gone up our electric bill, but it's gone up for everybody. And I'm like, I don't need to make it harder on anybody else. Like eventually, yeah, I'm going to have to raise it, but not right now. The economy is just such crap. I am not doing that to anybody. I want you guys to be able to take the lessons. Okay, let's see. Oops. Did I, yeah, I fixed that. I just want to make sure the auction ended because I might not have set the date right. I might have to manually go in. Oh, my internet or my website is just not, that might be the problem is my website. Give us just a second here. Oh, hey, look. Okay, did it, normal auction. It looks like it did end, so I can't see the name. It has it blocked out, so I don't know who won, but yay for whoever won the butterfly. Thank you so much. Um, And if you wanted that matted, if you're still watching, if you want it matted, just um, there should be a link. Oh, I don't know if I included the link on this one. Did I? Yeah, there's a link if you want the map. But again, you can map this on your own. You just go to Michael's or whatever. It looks nicer when you first open it, if it's mad, but you can just go to Michael's, you can go wherever and purchase that and just make sure you use an acid-free tape to tape it to the back of the mat, pop it in your frame and you are good to go. So it's very, very easy to do on your own. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining tonight. Oh, I knocked it in the water. See, this is why I have tile floors, dog drool, water, it all mops up and looks brand new. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Karen said, I love ink tents and marine themes. Okay, I'll do an ink tents. It'll probably be a lesson over on Patreon. I I don't know how I want to do, like if I do a Patreon, or, or I mean a live stream with ink tents, the problem is I can't really auction that because it's not archival. So I typically don't sell those. So I don't know. I mean, I guess if you guys knew, hey, it's ink tense. We don't know how light fast this is going to be for the prices these go for it. You're probably, it's not that like, it's not like you spent $3,000 and it faded in 10 years and you're going to be that upset about it. So um, yeah, I'll have to decide what to do with that. Uh, Miss Melissa said, 
what type uh, what type of tape do you do to secure the paper to the board? I use a pH neutral tape. If it's not listed in the video description now, I will have it in when I edit this video and I upload it tomorrow. I will have it listed there. Although we have like tornado storms coming tomorrow, I'm kind of scared about how bad tomorrow is going to be. So if we lose power, I may not be editing anything. I should have this video if all goes well, but it's, let me pull this up so you can see, hold on one second. There we go. So it's just a pH neutral tape. And that is what I use to map this, the board. I get it from Amazon. Oh, there we go. Nick just linked it. So I get it at Amazon. And it is wonderful. So that is what I use there. Thank you guys so much for joining. I don't know what we're doing next week. I have to figure that out. Leave, let me, if you want to leave me a comment over on MeWe in our Facebook group, or not our Facebook group, our, our art group over on MeWe is where I would most likely see it. You can do it on Facebook too. But if you just comment on like this video where I shared the link, let me know what you would like to see for next week. I can see if I can come up with something that I can get done. It's always a challenge too, because it has to be something I can get done in like an hour. So we will... See you next week. Check out our moderator's channel. We've got uh, Joseph, whose internet is having issues. Uh, he's got a channel here. He live streams almost every Monday, unless his internet is having issues. We've got Nick, who is maybe going to be doing some art shorts. And then we've got Clark Fine Art, who has awesome videos too. Definitely check them out. Links in the video description. Thank you guys so much for joining. And I will see you, well, I'll be uploading some of these videos and clips from this video this week, but I will see you otherwise for our live stream next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Hey, you. Yes, you. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my god, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up, and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.